Hi, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, But Didn't. Today, we're talking about hot coffee lawsuits. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Kyla, that hot coffee lawsuit was in the United States. It should never have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada. But Erin Dittman was in Canada, and she spilled hot coffee on herself while pulling out of a McDonald's drive through because she didn't transfer her cup correctly from her hand to her cup holder. She suffered serious injuries as a result of the spill, and rather than suing McDonald's for making coffee that was too hot, she sought a claim through her automobile insurance, arguing that she had been in a car accident by virtue of the fact that there was an accident that resulted in this, in this spill. The accident was just in how she transferred the cup question that the court had to answer was whether or not that was an accident for the purposes of uh, her insurance coverage. And ultimately, they dismissed her claim. Now, I know you're wondering, why is this case important enough to go to the Supreme Court of Canada? Because it deals with issues of statutory interpretation and the definition of accident in a no-fault insurance jurisdiction, where it doesn't matter whose fault the accident is, you get compensation for your injuries no matter what. And there are certain limits on how much you can be compensated for those injuries. BC is currently considering moving towards a no-fault system. And the fact that the system doesn't require anybody to be at fault or not at fault for the accident to get benefits, shouldn't that require a circumstance like this to fall under the definition of accident? It is an accident. It happened because she was in a car, and yet she was denied her injury claim. This is an important case because insurance law is developing into this system of determining not how much somebody's injuries are worth or not whether they are injured, um, but more about whether there was an accident at all. And the Supreme Court of Canada had the opportunity to define here whether there was an accident and to create a very good guideline for use across the country in determining what constitutes an accident in no-fault insurance and in what circumstances a person is entitled to benefits. Essentially, what the Supreme Court of Canada could have done is stopped a silly lawsuit from, from Ms. Pittman from happening again. But without clear guidelines of what is and what isn't an accident, and how we define accident for the purposes of automobile insurance, it's likely that other people are going to try and say that other things that happen in vehicles constitute accidents and entitle them to insurance benefits. It takes a toll on the courts, it takes a toll on the insurance companies, and it ends up costing Canadians at the bottom line of their insurance payments each month. The Supreme Court of Canada missed the chance here to put an end to silly hot coffee lawsuits in Canada so that we don't end up in a situation like the hot coffee lawsuits that take place at our neighbors to the south. You're watching Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada But Didn't. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada But Didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law Corporation. These videos have been produced by Brazen Bull Creative. Like, subscribe, share, and tune in next week for more.